Hello, thank you for joining us on our bite-sized video training. Today we will be discussing creating and managing VMware snapshots. In this lesson we will cover taking VMware snapshots, restoring VMware snapshots, managing and deleting VMware snapshots. We'll start out in our VPDC client today. We will be working with two training Windows 2008 VMs. We'll first be taking a snapshot when we enter the Snapshot Manager, you will see that you are here. Currently, you're at the parent and there are no snapshots. The current state of the VM is the only state. Now we will take a snapshot. So we must give it a snapshot name. The VM is running. We are going to want to include the virtual memory. If we revert back to this machine, it will revert back to the exact powered on state at the point of the tap snapshot. There is an option to quiesce the guest file system. It does require VMware tools properly installed. If you get an error, there are some VMware reference documents to the Microsoft VSS Writer service. And now you'll see the task start in vCenter. When you take a VMware snapshot, you're creating a new Delta copy of the virtual machine disk, the VMDK file. And then you're now writing to that Delta. So the more data that you write, the longer that it's going to take to commit and consolidate back into the parent. Yes, you will eventually need to commit snapshots. It is not recommended that you run in production with snapshots attached to your VM. So we're going to take a look at a VM that has a few snapshots. Snapshots can be taken in the linear method. You can also have snapshots with a process tree method. We see here a chain of snapshots, the parent and the children. We have the ability to go to any point in time and then even come back forward if we wanted to. Let's say that you do go back. We'll revert back to a point. We know that the software was working and the customer validated that things were good. Notice that the VM is powered on and reverted back to the exact state as when the snapshot was taken. Now we do have an abandoned snapshot that needs to be deleted and that child just simply gets discarded. But first let's take a look at the data store that houses all of the VMDK and all these snapshots that we've been taken. We can see the different dot VMSN, which are the memory snapshots, which are the maximum RAM of your virtual machine. Notice there's one per snapshot that we have. You can also see the VMDK and the deltas that have the zeros and the one, the zeros and the two. They're small because this is a lab server and there's no data being written at the moment. So now that you're still writing to a link pointing back to the original parent snapshot, the new data gets written to the new disk. When it comes time to consolidate and commit your snapshot, the delta copies will be written and added back to the parent disk. So your storage will actually grow while they're being consolidated. Then it will delete the deltas at the end. So before you click to delete and commit your snapshot, you can look at the amount of free space that you have in your data store. You can see the delta VMDK and add the space to the master to ensure that you have enough buffer to not hit capacity while you're rolling the deltas into the parent before you hit commit. Once committing the snapshot, the current VM state, once again, is the only VM state. Again, we do not recommend leaving snapshots attached to your VM for any extended period of time. And in fact, when you do commit, there will be a freeze in VM operation and disk IO while the snapshot child is committed back to the parent. Leaving snapshots behind can cause you increased storage expense, poor VM performance, and potential vMotion issues. Please use the delete all in the snapshot manager to free your VM of its stale snapshots.